Hey everyone, welcome back to Kali Plans and on our third day of our daily care guide here on the channel. For this week, uh, we're going to be talking about in this video the Echeveria, Echeveria reunionii or Echeveria reunionii. So this is actually the same plant as the Echeveria topsy-turvy which I featured before here on the channel. And I have my topsy-turvy right here. So the only difference is that the topsy-turvy is the mutated form of this succulent. This is the non-mutated form. The leaves here are upright. And the leaves here are not okay so that's the main only difference now just so you know what we're gonna be talking about in this video I will be sharing it with you this plants origin its description its needs when it comes to pot mix sunlight and watering and also I will be talking about the propagation of the succulent and the problems of this plant if you manage to get problems what problems you can expect with the succulent so I will be talking about that later on in the video so make sure to watch until the end now on the origins of this succulent this is actually described first by eric walter much like the echeveria gilba that we discussed a few days ago so he first found this plant in tamaulipas mexico it is actually already in cultivation when he first discovered it so it's not yet it's probably he didn't find it in the wild first he found it in cultivation first so it's already being taken care of when it was first described by the people who are discovering about succulents now also i would say that this is discovered in 1935 so this is already a very old variety of echeveria now also because this is already in cultivation for a little while it managed to get a lot of different names when it comes to sellers when it comes to breeders of succulents it's got names that are texas rose it's been called dr butterfield lucita Tom Allen, so those are all the names of this plant. Lucita, Tom Allen, here in the Philippines it's even called as White Rose, but those are actually inaccurate. The real name of this one is Runyonii, and those names are not hybrids of Runyonii, and they can probably have a little bit of difference with the main plant, with the original plant, because this is actually a very variable succulent. The leaves can actually produce different looks, different appearances, depending on the condition that it's in. So a lot of succulents do that, they are very variable, so some Echeveria reunionii might not always look uh, the same with our with other Echeveria reunionii so because the leaves are really variable. Also I would like to add that the crested form of the Echeveria reunionii is actually called Echeveria illusion. illusion. So that's the name of the crested form of this plant. So if you want a pretty uniquely named plant, yeah, you can buy a crested one of these and call it Illusion if you want. Now when it comes to the appearance of this plant, it's got this really beautiful circular shaped rosette so you can see here it's very circular it's very symmetric so that's how i would describe the rosette and the leaves are very glaucous it's actually pale pale bluish pale green in color if you manage to remove the uh, farina is you get these green undertones green colors underneath the farina so it's a very beautiful very striking plant and the leaves are uh, a bit thinner they're not very thick they can actually resemble echeveria imbricata but with more uh, whitish farina compared to that plant and this one can also produce uh, very large heads it can become wider than this much wider than this and much wider than the echeveria dorensiana or echeveria lola which can look pretty similar with this plant but this one can get even more bigger than that if you manage to get your hands on Echeveria topsy-turvy and you get a mature one of these, you would know that this one becomes very big in no time and that's what I would say is the same as this plant. It can also become very big, especially if you're not growing it in full sun, if the leaves are etiolating. So it can produce these wide rosettes of loosely, loosely arranged leaves, so the leaves will not be tight together if it's getting less sun now for the flowers of this plant it's got pinkish flowers with an orange throat so much like the topsy-turvy also this, this it has the same flower so the stalks will come up like that and it will be pinkish when the flowers appear as bell-shaped flowers there are, those are bell-shaped flowers they will appear pink on the outside and they will have this orange to reddish throat so that's what you would expect the flowers of this would be like and actually if it matures it can also produce a lot of flower stalks if it's the blooming season it can produce a lot of flowers now also before we move on to the care needs of this plant i would just like to say all the cultivars that i have when it comes to this plant so again we have the ordinary regular form of the reunionii which is very beautiful on its own we've got the mutated form which is echeveria topsy-turvy the leaves are upturned yes and we have the hybrids so this is 
one of my newer hybrids of Echeveria runionii. This is Echeveria dark vader or black hawk or more specifically more, how would I say this, more accurately the name is Echeveria spider. The recorded name of this plant, the documented name of this plant is Echeveria spider, not dark vader, not black hawk, but it's also sold as black hawk and dark vader. Now we also have the swan lake. This is the swan lake. So this is the Runyonii crossed with a Shabayana probably. This is also this also produces wider rosettes and it can also produce clumps. But I believe it's a trademark succulent overseas. So other people they won't propagate it much and they won't sell it because it's illegal in some areas. But here in the Philippines, um, we're pretty much in a free country right now when it comes to succulents. We have our Echeveria Exotic. This is a um, hybrid of Echeveria Ronyonii Tapsitervi and with an Echeveria Lawi. So there's another um, hybrid of Echeveria Ronyonii crossed with the Lawi and that is Echeveria Cali Argenti. So that is the non-mutated form of Ronyonii crossed with the Lawi. So the name is Cali Argenti but if it's the mutated form, if it's the upright leaf uh, Ronyonii crossed with the Lawi, the name is Echeveria Exotic. So this is actually one of my newer purchases. I haven't watered this a lot yet, so it doesn't have much growth yet. Next hybrid, this is actually Graptoveria Tapsitervi Debi. It's a cross with Tapsitervi and Graptoveria Debi. So it's actually a cross with Graptopetalum. Graptopetalum cross with Echeveria. So it has a little bit of Graptopetalum influence. The Debi we know that as an Amethystinum hybrid so it's got those purplish pinkish leaves because of the amethystinum so this one is very beautiful it can also be sold as echeveria cupid but it's no longer a pure echeveria plant and now we also have our famous infamous very beautiful echeveria cubic frost so this is a topsy-turvy, probably a topsy-turvy hybrid, but as I read online, nobody is really sure where who the parents of these plants are, of the cubic frost. But because it's got these upturned leaves, then you can probably guess that its parent is probably a topsy-turvy. So that's the cubic frost for you. Okay, so I think that's a really interesting plant because a lot of varieties is already uh, generated from this succulent. It's actually the offspring of this succulent crossed with other varieties. So I think that it's one that is really nice to add to your collection, especially if you're looking to find um, groupings of succulents that are not that popular. So this one will be a good addition for you. Now also, let me just say that as it grows, it can also produce clumps. So much like with our Echeveria Tapsitervi, it can produce babies on the sides. Actually, this one, I got this as a solitary succulent, but now it's producing a lot of babies on the sides. So I don't uh, think that it will take too long for this plant to produce these clumps. Beautiful Echeveria. Now let's go to the care needs of this plant, much like with our other succulents. The best potting mix that I would recommend with it is the 7 parts pumice and 3 parts organic material like uh, carbonized rice hull, compost, or vermicast. This one is actually planted in a compost mixture, mixture, much like the plants that I showed before. So it's planted in a cocoa peat, and actually it can tolerate the cocoa peat because the, toler the cocoa peat actually dries out much longer. But since it's a thin leaf succulent, then it can probably get used to that longer drying uh, potting mix so i don't think you will have issues with it if you're using cocoa peat in its potting mix but just to be safe or if you're not yet sure you can also try carbonized rice hull with it because carbonized rice hull dries out much more quicker actually i don't think that you can get problems with it rotting very quickly because it's a thin leaf succulent it can tolerate more water than our thick leaf varieties and also it's a faster grower so you can give it more sun give it more water and it will produce more growth compared with your other thicker succulents that, that's what i would say because i have this plant it was still smaller when i got it but it was probably about two months ago and now it has a lot more leaves and it's looking much more symmetrical the rosette is much more fuller so that's what I would say because I've been consistently giving it water. So now, after planting it, just uh, I would re just recommend give it morning sun already. Because the leaves have much farina, it's got this thick farina, it can tolerate a lot more sun compared to our thinner farina-covered 
succulents. So this one can tolerate a lot more sun. And I haven't had issues with it burning. Actually, I placed it in the front part of this greenhouse. And some other succulents there burned, but this one didn't. So it wasn't even fully rooted yet but it wasn't producing these sunburns on the leaves so it can tolerate a lot of sun so just remember that when it comes to succulents they are uh, pretty sun thirsty plants so they can also etiolate very quickly if you don't give it a lot of sun also when it comes to watering you can water it once the potting mix is dry and once the leaves at the bottom is wrinkled it's no longer firm so this plant of mine is actually getting pushed very easily so it can probably get water soon so maybe in a few days I will water it but if you're not sure don't water it right away now when it comes to propagation of this plant as I said before it can produce clumps very quickly very easily so you can expect it to produce babies on the side uh, once you manage to grow this actually I have probably had another plant of this variety and it had a lot of babies before and I didn't know what to do with the babies because it was really clumping on the side but you can just let it grow and you can separate them once the babies are big enough so that you can produce more plants for yourself so I would just really recommend you avoid taking out the babies if they're still too, too small because it might be harder for them to root it might be harder for them to grow if they're still small and you separated them already from the main plant so I would really recommend you leave the small pups on the main plant first let them grow before you separate them now when it comes to leaf propagation you can probably propagate it via leaf but since the leaves are thin so it might not have that high chance of success when you remove them maybe if the leaves are already big enough and if they're thick enough with water if you manage to make your plant thicker so you can probably have success with that but i would also say that this could have a chance of propagating crested heads from a leaf from a leaf propagation because the leaves are wide so wide uh, leaves wider leaves can have a chance of propagating crested plants so that's just a thing to note if you don't want crested succulents you can just let it grow take out the pups or you can behead it if it's not producing pups yet for you now when it comes to the problems of this succulent uh, it doesn't have any problems with me but i believe that you can have issues with it when it comes to mealybugs aphids and scale so you can use the circle g i always recommend that insecticide because i've had success with that before you can sprinkle that on the pot of your plant if you see any pests so that the plant can absorb the insecticide and can kill any insects that are biting on the plant now I would also say since it's uh, not a very tight looking Echeveria, it's still uh, loose. So you can remove the insects if you can. Just manually remove the insects that you're seeing on this plant because removing that will really help avoid getting an infestation. So if you can take out the, the insects, just take it out. Um, even if you don't have insecticide, that will really help with the plant a lot. And also, it can probably attract insects if it's blooming. So you can remove the bloom stalks if you don't like the flowers. And if you don't want getting any pests on your plants. Now on shipping, I would say that this plant is very good in shipping. It can dry out some of its bottom leaves. But I haven't seen this plant getting mushy in shipping. And I haven't heard people receiving mushy uh, plants of this variety through shipping. So it's a very good one to ship if you are living in a pretty distant location here in the philippines and shipping is very slow for you i would recommend you try this plant so i think that's about all i can say when it comes to this plant if you really like the echeveria ironionii and if you want to collect its many varieties please make sure to hit the like be below so that i will know that you like this plant and also if you like the tips so you can hit the thumbs up it really helps us here in the channel and also if you have any other requests when it comes to our daily care guide series if if you want to see any other plant please make sure to comment it down below i will try to make a video on that soon once i read your comment if you have any questions i will also try to answer it down at the comments below so if you haven't also also subscribed already please make sure to hit the subscribe we will do a lot more daily care guide videos here on the channel soon you can see here i'm still gonna make the videos for this one so i will probably do that after this video but i think that's about for this video stop guys i will see you on the next one Bye-bye.